Hello, everyone. My name is Tanya Bryan, and I run product at ClickHouse. And today I'm here to talk to you about what's happening in the world of data warehousing and why I believe that one size can no longer fit all when it comes to data warehousing and why I believe we need a real time data warehouse. So, first, a little bit of history. If you don't know what a data warehouse is, it's a term that evolved about 30 years ago. Uh, in relation to vendors like IBM, Oracle, Teradata, eventually Hadoop is an open source alternative for systems that businesses set up to centralize data that they maybe had in disparate uh, applications and data stores for centralized decision making. At that point, this was on-prem. And these systems were batch oriented in nature, typically in the way they loaded the data and the type of applications they supported were reporting oriented. Typically you would set up a report, it would run in the background, it would get delivered to you on some schedule. Definitely not very interactive at that time. And when um, these organizations started shifting workloads to cloud, data warehousing workloads were no exceptions. Eventually they followed in a new cadre of vendors that you've probably heard of, like Redshift from AWS or BigQuery from Google or Snowflake helped organizations shift these workloads to cloud but not necessarily change the nature of the workloads. Sure, they optimized in many ways, but the nature of the workloads were still, as I described, fairly batch oriented and not necessarily interactive. Another thing that happened that I personally find interesting from my vantage point is that by the nature of being in the cloud, these workloads also just experienced a lot more openness in the way that developers could interact with them. A lot more integrations, a lot more ability for developers to experiment with them. So in a sense, what we were calling big data at that time, really they kind of democratized big data, if I'm honest. So I think this was a pretty fundamental shift, pretty important because again, these were business critical, mission critical, important workloads. So hold that thought. Now let's look at what happened in the world of applications. And if you think just for yourself, the type of applications you were using 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they were very different from today. Um, there were not even mobile applications. There was no concept of search in an application. So a lot has changed in the type of applications we all rely on. We, you know, I just take myself as an example. I'm a product person. I rely on marketing data, sales data. For my product that's cloud oriented, I look at um, observability and usage metrics. And I need that data to be fairly fresh in the way that I make my decisions. But at the same time, I need access to historical data, so fresh and historical data. And I need to be asking questions in real time and responses to come back quickly for me to make decisions. And so these interactive data-driven applications or real-time applications, as I'm calling them, are frankly eating the world in every industry, every profession. You can read the slide here. I could put, honestly, any logo on this slide, almost any um, organization today internally relies on more and more interactive real-time decision making and more and more companies are building for that kind of decision making building services and applications for this kind of decision making so this is happening in parallel so what do you think happened with these cloud data warehouses they have a lot of data data gravity is real developers of course try to build some of these interactive and data-driven applications on top of this cloud data warehouse why not right and they ran into challenges the first one of them was delayed data ingest. And we're talking about multi-hour, sometimes even day delayed. And why is that? A data warehouse is hyper-optimized, as I mentioned before, for multiple consumers versus a need of an individual mission-critical application that needs very fresh data. And these types of delays where you can't even ask your question for multiple hours is just a deal breaker for many of these interactive data-driven apps. If you get, can get past this gate, the next gate is how quickly can that query come back? And again, a type of data organization and data warehouse relies on highly denormalized data sets. And in the end, during query time, you have to use expensive and slow joins to join them. And for real-time decision-making, not always optimal. And the reason we did this back then is storage was expensive and we had to optimize, not so much today, not in all cases. And so new type of data organization is needed for real-time applications and query performance needs to be sub-second, millisecond, not tens of seconds or minutes, and certainly not hours. The next gate was consumers. How many concurrent queries do you have to uh, support as an application? And for external applications, we're talking about hundreds, thousands often, and even for internal 
you know, more and more of us are asking our internal team for access to data. It's no longer just there for the selected few um, and privileged. Uh, data democratization, again, is real. Uh, most organizations are saying we need to enable our professionals to ask questions themselves as opposed to go to some select team. So much higher query concurrency requirements are real and um, data warehouses, including cloud data warehouses, still place restrictions on it, either in the system itself or just in terms of how the architecture is built. So when teams try to fix it, usually the only option they have was to throw more resources at the problem, more compute. And um, this compute is expensive in the way that the pricing models are structured for cloud data warehouses. So they ran into skyrocketing costs. You probably heard about um, Instacart and sort of the, the debate around Snowflake spend that they had in terms of you know tens of millions of dollars. Unfortunately, this is not an anomaly. This is more a reality for most teams today, examining their spend on data warehousing and asking themselves, is there a better way? And what they're finding is that um, they still need, need and want a data warehouse, frankly. They're still dealing with a lot of data, but they want um, this data to also be continuously loading. And they want their applications to support highly interactive query patterns and high concurrency rates. And they want to achieve latency uh, in some seconds. So they want this data warehouse. They just want it to be real time, a real time data warehouse. And they need a system that is extremely storage efficient for this use case, um, as well as um, ability to support these requirements uh, with high efficiency and be at the center of both external and internal applications as they're building them. Now, the system may still connect to other systems that are optimized for batch applications. Those haven't completely gone away. They still exist. But more and more, frankly, we're seeing a data lake be used for that. So just object storage with some standardized file format versus a traditional data warehouse because it is more open. And in fact, the real-time data warehouse can still connect to those um, additional stores of data to either pull data in for a real-time use case or even do a hybrid query. This is increasingly a requirement. So there are some really interesting questions about how you build an architect, a real-time data warehouse that we're seeing our users and customers start to debate. So if you'd like to hear more about this topic um, and this um, shift in the industry that we're calling the unbundling of the cloud data warehouse, please um, go and uh, look at this blog. We uh, wrote a piece that describes what we're seeing in the industry. And if you'd like to speak to me about this and discuss and debate, I'm very open to it. I'm Tanya Bragan. I run product at ClickHouse. You can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Medium. I would love to hear from you on this topic. Thank you so much.